What is up budget billers? My name is Trail and today we have a huge important announcement to make from the IRS of course and it has to do with your money in 2022. Also in the news hey we had Senator Mitch McConnell block a very important bill from actually happening in the Senate. Just another setback for the Democrats in their efforts to push President Biden's agenda. Also the Democrats are still pressing forward with the negotiations on the Build Back Better Act and trying to persuade Senator Joe Manchin to support this bill. Meanwhile, President Biden is now asking for Congress for more stimulus funding during this pandemic. And Biden believes that the pandemic is not over yet and Americans and businesses are still needing assistance. And last but not least, we are starting to see the emergency rental assistance program come to an end in various states. But in some states, it is still available. We have one state still offering up to $63,000 in rental assistance. Now guys, if you're interested in any of these topics today and you want to be a part of this channel, be so kind and go ahead and subscribe to it. It's totally free. And if you end up liking this video, then go ahead and hit that like button for us. It really helps out this channel. Now let's go ahead and jump right back into the video. Hey guys, real quick. Hey, I wanted to ask for your support on my new YouTube channel that we'll be launching sometime this month and it's called Budget bill finance. Now I'm going to be talking about how to grow your wealth as well as how to invest in stocks as well as how to invest in real estate as well as showing you guys what I'm actually doing outside of YouTube. So if you want to be a part of that channel be so kind and go ahead and subscribe to it. I hope to see you guys there. Now that link will be down below in the description. Well, 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 we just broke another record. 1.4 million new daily COVID cases in the US, as well as hospitalizations, test positivity also hit all time highs. Now, of course, this record breaking news is driven by the Omicron variant. The US saw a record number of new cases and hospitalizations and they hit a all new time high, according to yesterday. Now, according to the John Hopkins University, they reported 1.4 million new cases in the country on Tuesday. That's 300,000 plus cases above the previous high of just 1 million cases seen on January the 3rd. Now the new jump is being fueled by a seven day average test positivity rate that was 26.3% as of Sunday, which is also a record. That number, which in generally considered a better measure of infection spread than cases because it is an average taken over the course of seven days, which was up 20 25% from the previous week when it clocked in at 20.9%. Now the previous all-time high of 23% was seen on April the 3rd of 2020. So <laughs> this thing is not going away guys. The U.S. continues to set new records in COVID-19 cases as well as hospitalizations. But in also news guys, hey, because of the pandemic as well as these surges in the variant COVID cases, Red Cross declares the first national blood crisis in the U.S. The Red Cross has declared its first ever national blood crisis. In the statement emailed on Tuesday, the organization warned members of the public of the consequences of its worst blood shortage in more than a decade, including doctors being forced to make difficult decisions about which patients receive blood transfusions over others, as well as the American Red Cross said it had less than one day of supply of critical blood types and has had to limit the distributions to hospitals. Now, at times, as much as one quarter of hospital blood needed are not being met, according to the organization. The COVID-19 pandemic has seen a 10% overall decline in the number of people donating blood, in addition to ongoing blood drive cancellations and staffing limitations. Now, the Red Cross has urged the public to make an appointment to donate blood as blood and platelets donations are critically needed to help prevent further delays in vital medical treatment. Now, donors of all blood types, especially type O, are being urged to make an appointment now to give in the weeks ahead. And with the Red Cross noting that the pandemic has seen a 62% drop in blood drives at schools and colleges. Winter weather across the country and the recent surge of COVID-19 cases are compounding the already dire situation facing the blood supply. So guys, I would urge you guys, if you can, if possible, 
go ahead and go down to the American Red Cross and go ahead and donate some blood. They are in desperate need right now. And then also, I have a question for you guys out there, all of my budget billers. Hey, do you know what blood type you actually have? I mean, it says right here in this article that they are in desperate need of type O blood type, but I'm curious to see exactly, do you guys know what blood type you are? I know me myself, I am a blood type A minus, but let me know down below in the comment section if you actually know what the blood type that you are. Now, you don't have to actually say what blood type it is if you don't want to, but I just want to know if you actually know. I think that's just a very good, important question to know in the future. Now, guys, for this important information coming out of the IRS, they stated on Monday that the future, which is right now, the tax filing season is going to begin on January the 24th. And the IRS is sending a warning, letting everyone know letting everyone know guys hey i'm going to read it for you okay this year's tax filing season officially begins on monday january the 24th and the irs announced this information two days ago now the first day that the agency will start accepting and processing 2021 federal tax returns is going to be on january the 24th now planning for the nation's filing season process is a massive undertaking and the irs teams have been working non-stop these past several months to prepare for it, according to the IRS Commissioner Chuck Reddick. Now, the pandemic continues to create challenges, but the IRS wants to remind people that there are important steps that they can take to help ensure that their 2021 tax return and refund don't face processing delays. Now, the agency said that January the 24th start date will ensure that its systems run smoothly. And this year, the IRS must make sure that eligible taxpayers receive the current amount of the child tax credit. The IRS is also want to warn you that service delays when the 2021 tax filing season opens up there are going to be a lot of delays and they want you guys to know, they want the public to know that these delays are going to happen, but they want everyone to rest assured that they are all working through this together. The agency is saying that they now have several million pieces of backlog information or work from prior years that they need to handle. And along with the new 2021 tax filings of your return. So yes, in many areas, they are saying that they are going to be unable to deliver the amount of service and enforcement that our taxpayers and tax system deserves and need. This is going to be frustrating for taxpayers, for the IRS employees, and for me, the IRS commissioner, Charles Reddick. IRS employees want to do more, and we will continue in 2022 to do everything possible with the resources that they have available. So again, guys, I just want to warn you and the IRS wants to warn you that there are going to be some delays. So be mindful of that information before you pick up the phone and you call them trying to figure out what is taking so long for you to get your stimulus check. I mean, your tax return check as well as those child tax credits as well. And even if we receive a fourth stimulus check this year, that is going to add on to the amount of work that they have to do over at the IRS. Now on to some stimulus update news, guys. Hey, Mitch McConnell has blocked a simple majority vote on the Democrats' voting rights bill. Yes, guys, of course, Mitch McConnell is at it again. And on Monday, he blocked an attempt by the Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer to set up a simple majority vote on a sweeping elections bill and legislation to bolster the 1965 Voting Rights Act, which would have allowed Democrats to pass the two bills without any GOP support. Now, Senator Chuck Schumer on the Senate floor detailed his offer to Mitch McConnell, allowing the two bills to need only only a simple majority to pass instead of needing the normal 60 votes to advance this bill in the Senate. Now, in exchange, the Democrats would sign off on holding simple majority votes on nearly 20 bills that the Republicans placed on the Senate calendar for this year, which makes them available for a vote but doesn't guarantee that they'll actually get one. Now, Chuck Schumer said that we, the Democrats, aren't afraid of these votes. So, what I propose to the Republican leader which is Mitch McConnell, is that the Senate 
hold up or down votes at a majority threshold on each of the Republicans' bills he has outlined tonight, as well as the Freedom to Vote Act and the John Lewis Voting Rights Advancement Act, Chuck Schumer said from the Senate floor. But Mitch McConnell did not like that, guys. He, however, has rejected Schumer's offer on the Senate floor without elaborating of his objection. Under the Senate's rules, any one senator can try to set up a vote or pass a bill, but because it requires sign-off from the full Senate and one senator can also object to block that request. Now, Chuck Schumer is expected to force these votes this week on both the Freedom to Vote Act, which would overhaul federal elections and separate voting legislation named after the late Representative John Lewis of Georgia that would strengthen the 1965 Voting Rights Act. But Republicans are set to use the 60 vote legislative filibuster to block those bills from advancing. So again, guys, these two, the Republican side as well as the Democratic side, are continuing to go after one another, blocking each other's votes from passing in the Senate. Now, I will say we hope that they can actually get this Build Back Better bill to actually go through. And all they need is Senator Joe Manchin's approval for that bill. But so far, he is still standing strong in opposing of that bill. And he is saying that he is still not okay with the current child tax credit that is in the bill right now, which Manchin is still against other things that are included in that bill as well. So we still don't know where that sits right now, guys, but we will continue to monitor as usual. Also in regards to Senator Mitch McConnell, he has now announced that he will be running for another term as the leader of the Republican Party, despite former President Donald Trump continues to thrash against Mitch McConnell. Now, you guys already know that former President Donald Trump has been going after Mitch McConnell as being the leader of the Republican Party. And in lieu of that, he has been supporting bipartisan bills with the Democrats. And Trump is not happy of that. Donald Trump has been calling for someone else to take over Mitch McConnell's position. And this has been going on while President Trump was in office. But as he is not in office right now, he continues to go after the GOP leader, Mitch McConnell. But Mitch McConnell said that, hey, he is not even stuttering President Donald Trump right now. He is continuing to ignore everything that he is putting out in the news media, as well as he has been telling the Republican Party to continue to ignore former President Donald Trump as he is not in the runnings right now for the Republican Party. In other news, guys, hey, about the emergency rental assistance, I had mentioned to you guys that this has been ending in several states, but it is still going on in other states. And let's go ahead and read this article because it says that one state is still offering up to $63,000 in rental assistance. So yes, guys, the rental assistance is still available and they are telling you that be sure that you apply before it's too late. Now, many that experience financial burdens throughout the pandemic can still find help with rental assistance assistance as well as other bills. The rental assistance program will pay for up to 18 months of unpaid rent and utility bills for some individuals. Now, many have already taken advantage of this program, meaning that the funding is almost gone as many others still need it right now. And states that have ended rental assistance, there are about four states and other areas in the United States that have already closed their applications for the emergency rental assistance, which is New York, New Jersey, Oregon, Texas, and Washington, D.C., and other areas. But the federal funding that they received is now gone. So if you live in another area and need the help, it's best to apply right now before all of that money is actually gone as well. Now, who can receive this rental assistance? Now, in order to be eligible, you need to have experienced hardship during the pandemic as well as owe rent right now. You may not make over 80% of the median income for your area as well as it needs to be demonstrated you're at risk of becoming homeless. Some states have additional requirements like receiving unemployment or just showing the loss of your income. Now, in order to apply for rental assistance, the amount of money or type of support you can actually get depends on where you actually live. Now, while some states offer a year and a half of support, others are only offering a limited amount or just one year total, such as Arizona, for example. They are offering up to $3,500 
per month for your rent as well as utilities. Now this particular offer is good for up to 18 months, making the total around $63,000. Now as well as Georgia is also offering up to $15,000 total for just one year. Now to learn more about these specific states that are offering the emergency rental assistance, contact your local emergency rental assistance program in your state. Now if you don't have that number or you don't know exactly who to call, hey, all you have to do is just pick up your phone and go to a browser or Google or go to your computer and type in emergency rental assistance in Texas if you live in Texas of course but go ahead and type your state in and that should show you a link to where you can get more information on exactly who you can contact in regards to the emergency rental assistance program in your state. I hope that information is helpful to you guys but in also other news guys President Biden is now asking for Congress for more COVID pandemic aid funds. Now this is in regards to more stimulus relief aid as well as more COVID pandemic relief aid to be provided for the government to be able to do more support for the American people as well as businesses in this country. Now the White House has plans to ask Congress for more money to spend on the federal response to the COVID-19 pandemic. House Majority Leader Steeny Hoyer confirmed to reporters on Tuesday. Now the funds will target vaccines, testing, and aid for schools. Hoyer said, but the timing of the request remains to be determined, as does the legislative vehicle to deliver the funding as well. Now, House Appropriations Chair Rosa Delario said that the preliminary discussions between lawmakers and the White House have actually begun. There's been discussions about what we need with regards to the COVID-19, but domestically and internationally. So we will see how that manifests itself over time. But she said that I think, you know, we'll take a look at that and see how that fits in with an omnibus, she added, referring to the spending bill for the fiscal year of 2022. But Republicans may actually be in opposed to this because so far no Republicans have voted for the $1.9 trillion American Rescue Plan that was signed by President Biden back in March. And it's not clear that GOP lawmakers are even interested in another round of pandemic related spending. But overall, guys, hey, the bottom line is that Democrats are discussing more stimulus funding to fight the pandemic, but the Republicans may not get on board so far. The issue could be a stumbling block as lawmakers try to hammer out a budget deal for the current fiscal year ahead of February the 18th when the current short-term funding agreement will actually expire. So this is some good news guys that President Biden as well as the Biden administration continues to ask for Congress to provide more stimulus funding for the American people as well as to provide more testing, which we already know they are planning on sending out 500 million home COVID tests to Americans all over, which they are going to set up a website. And all you have to do or residents have to do is get online and order one of these free COVID-19 testing kits to be sent directly to your home. Now they're going to be using this stimulus funding for other things such as hopefully another stimulus check, but they have not stated that just yet. But we are still have our hopes very high on getting a fourth stimulus check sometime this year. Now that money is also going to be used for helping businesses out. As you guys know, businesses are really struggling right now in order to stay open as well as hiring more people, as well as to actually increase the minimum wage in most states. We saw yesterday's video where I talked about only about 22 states have actually increased their minimum wage in 2022. So the stimulus funding is going to help out in various ways all together. So we hope that Congress is going to be able to support this request from the Biden administration in order to give more stimulus money for more stimulus funding in this country. Now, I hope all of this information in this video was helpful to you today. <laughs> but anyways, guys, hey, that's all I have for you today. Now, if you enjoyed this type of content and you want to see more, hey, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. It's totally free. And if you like this video, then go ahead and hit that like button for us. It really helps out this channel as well as it tells YouTube to share this video with others. But anyways, guys, hey, I appreciate you guys stopping by and watching. And I hope to see you on the next video. Peace.